Welcome to Talk at the Table with God Food Wine. It's like walking into your friend's place, cozy, uplifting, and inviting. As you enter, your friend greets you with a smile, making you feel instantly at home. You have arrived. It's beautiful having you here. My name is Amy. I am your host and so grateful to be with you today around the table of God Food Wine. So pour yourself a glass of wine. We have non-alcoholic wine too. Get cozy and treat yourself to some well-deserved you time as we relax and share inspired conversation, food, and wine. Welcome to the table of God Food Wine. Back from a restful break, I'm so happy to be back to join you today as you join us for Talk at the Table with God Food Wine. I'm really excited because someone I absolutely adore is cozying up with us to talk about the heart of forgiveness. Some months ago, Linda wrote me a heartwarming and touching email sharing her personal story. In the email, she spoke of how God had answered her prayer that she had ultra patiently waited for, for over 10 years to be exact, and how the women at God Food Wine supported her in prayer and friendship all these years. And now the bloom of those prayers are manifesting in her life. I can't wait for Linda to share her story with us today. Linda is a beautiful mama of twins, a true blue friend with a heart of pure gold, an amazing writer and journalist for a media group that publishes alternative weekly newspapers, and my former roomie, please welcome my lovely friend, Linda. Everyone, to talk at the table with God Food Wine and welcome today, my dear friend, Linda. Hello, cheers, Linda. Hi, Amy. <laughs> it's so it's good to have you right here in front Thank of Thank you for having me today it's in the beautiful town of Sonoma. It's mm. so pretty outside right now. It's yes. really nice to be here too. It's beautiful today. We've got this nice array of food at the table and our wine glass full of Hamilton family rosé, which we actually went to the spring release party last weekend. Mm -hmm. Last and Sunday. Had, yeah, last Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we had this actually rosé of Grenache, which is beautiful. Um, Hamilton family is in Sonoma and they make minimal intervention natural. They go towards the natural winemaking. So mm -hmm. you feel great. It doesn't have all the 1,000 chemicals in it that's approved for some of the conventional yeah. wines. Didn't she say it was organic too? I and thought she did say it was organic. Yes, okay. yes, and organic as well. Mm -hmm. So cheers. cheers, honey. It's so good to see you. It's nice to see you too. Oh. And we have a beautiful array here from Spread Kitchen in Sonoma, Lebanese-inspired food. We have saffron rice with apricots and caramelized onions and chicken shawarma. Did I say that right? Yeah. And tabbouleh made with quinoa and some pita bread, as well as some lamb kofta here, uh, lebna yogurt with mint and lemon. And these, which I can't wait to get into, are brownies? tahini brownies, mm, which healthy. are amazing from what I understand. So um, dig in whenever. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, honey. And hello to our crowd today. Thank yes. you for joining us today at Talk at the Table at God Food Wine and for being with us around this table today. So here we are 10 years later into our friendship. I know. It's been <laughs> such a lovely journey with you, girl. <laughs> yeah, it has. We were roomies for two years and our dear friend, Sarah, Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, oh, introduced yeah. Sarah us. introduced us. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And grateful we, to Sarah. Yes, miss her. Mm -hmm. And we lived together for two years with with the beautiful twins Emma and Alex. And I just loved that time. It was it was a beautiful time. That's how I really got to know you. To be. I remember when I family. first. She's family to me. Oh, I know, girl. <laughs> we I love still you, are. yes, sisters. <laughs> yes. Well, I've had the most amazing time, of course, getting to know you over the years. But I do remember the first time I met you, 
it was just, it was at Sarah's house. I remember that. And we were there for a God food wine. Oh, right. The early stages of God food wine. You <laughs> yes, remember that? I do. It was so fun. The lace tablecloth. What, six to eight elegant. girls gathered around in the tiny little living room? It was. It was the it, love cottage. It was, a, it was yeah, <laughs> it was um, um, Sarah's love cottage, right? And yes. then, but it was uh, so spontaneous. I remember mm -hmm. the gatherings that we used to have back yeah. then. Yeah. And that's how it started, that whole um, um, friendship group. Yeah. That, and I'm so happy for you that you're starting mm -hmm. this and bringing more people into the into the fold, as you say, <laughs> right? And getting more people involved. I think it's wonderful. Aww. But those yeah, days were you. always um, blessed with, of course, God. Our friend Jesus was always there. Yes, yes. Uh, our father, God, our friends. Yes, yes. Food. Yes. <laughs> and wine. And wine. <laughs> Lots of toasting. So you're keeping it real right now <laughs> with, the, with our talk today. Yeah. So. Well, I'm excited to talk about our um, our subject. It's a yeah. It's a really it's a really important thing. Mm. I think that mm. that we um, as humans experience every day of our life, as we talked about before, the forgiveness side of it. Yes, yes. So Linda and I were talking about forgiveness the other day, and Linda has something on her heart to share about that topic today and it's I know a little bit of it it's a beautiful story but I'm actually going to be really in it today hearing you share what's on your heart well you know as your friend and a god food wine person with you <laughs> like one of the things that we share is um our feelings for each other and what's going yeah. on in our lives yes and not we can't necessarily be together at a table to have a god food wine session like we used to yeah. so when i'm not available to meet up in person i will text email or call you about yeah. things and yeah. what happened that day was um i had received a blessing one of the many blessings that i i've received over the years mm -hmm. since since joining god food wine <laughs> actually and um mm -hmm. You know, tapping into the awareness of feeling blessed and yeah. acknowledging, affirming it, and then thanking the Lord Jesus and God, mm -hmm. Father God, for these blessings that, you know, that are always coming upon us, it <laughs> seems. But what happened that day was um, something really profound and I mm -hmm. just got a, a word for, for you to tell you that all those prayers that we shared mm -hmm. and that you helped me with, you know, in our circle of friends yes. all those years back. Wow, yeah. I remember all those prayers around um, the Love Cottage and during the time that all that was being Well, what happened was is I was going through a divorce yeah. and um, I reached out to my friends, of course, my God Food Wine friends. And we would get together and like I said, spontaneous, but always the most fulfilling yeah. you know, time together. Because <laughs> lots we, of fun too. <laughs> we always had so much fun. <laughs> I mean, but we also had like very deep conversations where yeah. and then we always had some sort of solution through prayer. Yeah. And trust, of course, and our faith. Yeah. That helped us through it. Mm -hmm. Anyway. What we I was trying to tell you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, during that time, I was going, the beginning part of that time, I was going through that divorce. And yeah. um, just recently, I received a blessing about um, my um, post-divorce, you know, and the blessing over that. Because um, as many of you might understand that, you know, going through something so horrible, like, the feeling of a divorce yes. that like sometimes you feel helpless or mm -hmm. hopeless that it will ever be right again between that person and yourself. Sure. Yeah. And I prayed so hard to um, one day have that um, like relationship, but not the same relationship, of course, but a, sure. 
a nice relationship and amicable, right? Friendly. And- yeah. Not only that, but somebody who like felt like your best friend still, you yeah. know, like, cause you know, there's right. something so important, you know, when you do decide to marry somebody, mm-hmm. you know, what you feel for that person. It was a lifetime bond, yes. you know, bond between us. And, um, and I'm not going to deny together. it. Yeah. Oh, twins. we had children. Yes. We had twins, <laughs> but you know, I can't deny it, you know? Yeah. And I never spoke bad about him, but I always yeah. felt that there was something uh, that needed to be healed yeah. throughout the years. And it finally happened where I got the download one day and I wrote you about it where I was like, <laughs> I'm finally there. We are finally there. Like we are, are good. Yeah. Now. Whoa. And that's 10, 10 years or so in the making. Two Maybe years more, of, a, actually. of waiting, yeah, waiting for that prayer to be answered. So, oh my gosh, cheers to that! Yeah, I mean, it's well, thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you for um, that prayer journey and all of it coming to pass. And you know, I, oh my gosh, I just am thinking something right now, and I just am now putting it together. This morning, I woke up and I had. A lot of things I wanted to do. I kind of woke up with this um, to-do list Mm -hmm. and I just got at it. Mm -hmm. I usually start with a quiet time in the morning, but today I was a little restless for that. So I needed to just move with God, you know, and then it was about 10 o'clock and I felt to sit down and I just opened my Bible and I wasn't uh, thinking about anything. I was just opening it up Mm -hmm. and it, it opened up to Habakkuk. And it, that's a, that's a, uh, chapter I had never really go to, or ever mm-hmm. not thought about in a right. long time. Kind of random, huh? Very random. And I had highlighted, I guess, sometime way back, um, it was, um, in the Bible and I did not come prepared with that verse because it literally just came on me right now. The revelation that I had this morning, it said, um, something of like, do not worry about the vision shall come to pass. Mm. It, it will not, even though it may tarry, even though it may delay Mm -hmm. that prayer, that vision Mm -hmm. will come to pass. And we did, Mm -hmm. you saw that vision. I remember you having that hope Mm. of, of, um, your former husband, y'all having that amicable peace and having that friendship. Mm -hmm. You had that vision I did. And even though it, it, you know, it in God's timing in his I trusted patient, and, yeah. you had so much patience mm-hmm. that that verse is for you. I just realized that. Oh, and I'll give great. it to you yeah. when we, when we leave today. And I'll also note it in the bottom of this podcast so that everyone can um, read it if they'd like as well. Mm-hmm. It's just a beautiful verse. So if yeah. there's something that you've been waiting on for a long time. Um, I just believe your, your story, your inspirational story today yeah. is inspiration for others as well. I just feel to say that don't, don't lose hope. And even though many people might say or feel or, you know, think that it was, ne- will never be possible. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Just keep the faith that it will happen if you trust, you know, like if yeah. you trust in the Lord and keep praying and having friends pray for you too. Yeah. I think it really is powerful. Um, and without going into details, I mean, this was a miracle. Would you say? I would think yes. I, I never <laughs> got remarried. I never did. And neither did he, but, um, we always, I think over the years after the pain, you know, sufficed and we were moving into like our new lives apart. Yeah. Um, I think what we realized was like, we still liked who each other were. Yeah. And then we still liked helping each other because we, we knew we yeah. were going to, we were, you know, trustworthy people, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I think that, um, that vow that he made for me and I, for him still mm. exists in a, in a different way though, Yes, you know, yes. and we're still both honoring it in our own special way. It's yeah. really hard to explain <laughs> that, but, um, the thing is, is, um, we're still sort of taking care of each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I worry about his health. He worries about my health. Mm. 
we take care of each other financially. Well, he mostly me, but <laughs> you know what hey, I mean? Hey, that's very nice. But, you know, it's, it's almost like um, we're doing each other's parts where we need to be. We yeah. fill in those blanks. You know, the word I'm getting right now is honor, um, that y'all are honoring one another and um, yeah. and there's there's a, feel that. Like, a yeah. like an honor that you have with God with him and he has an honor with God with you mm-hmm. and you know honor can look different in every situation mm-hmm. and this is a way that, that, he's, that, that we're y'all honoring, are honoring each other, each other. still mm-hmm. and then I also you know the forgiveness part of it too you yeah know, because I felt so guilty not only from him you know I felt bad that for him yeah and then but I also felt bad to God too like I felt that guilt Mm. and I felt guilt to my parents my dad Mm. and I felt guilt um to my children like I carried that with me and I think that God you know um he uh, calmed my anxiety over that and he made me feel like you're good you're okay (laughs) you know don't feel that way. I got you. I'm yeah. covering you. And um, I guess, you know, I felt like as long as I trusted and prayed as much as I couldn't and trusted and had faith in it, it has come full circle where oh. he's answered those prayers for me, where I felt secure. I don't feel guilty anymore. Mm. You know, I feel that I am going to be okay. But because when, when it all was going down, I was a mess and mm-hmm. My friends at God Food Wine were <laughs> hel- holding me up, literally yeah. holding me up, you know, in every single way. Mm-hmm. You know, they were there for me to to visit, to talk, to pray with. And it was like, that's what I needed at that yeah. time, you know. Yeah. So it's so important to, like, find the, the group, you know, yes. that you that can help support you. Yes, totally. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember just between you and I, um, I started rooming with Linda. She had an extra room in her home and Sarah said, you know, Linda's looking for a roommate and I needed a place to live. And um, that was kind of happening around the time that everything was going on. Right. Like, like, we all need each other, you know, we needed each other. Yeah. It was like that time was like, I made the decision after, you know, after I made the decision, then, yeah, you know, soon after Sarah told me you needed a place. And then I was like, come on over. Yeah. Yeah. And then you came, you needed, you know, help with the home financially and it just worked out. It worked out. It did. That was God, you know, just putting like, I love how he puts all the puzzle pieces together. Like, okay. You know, yeah, you Linda filled needs, you filled Linda in a space help. for me that I needed a companion. Yeah. I felt like you were my partner. And then <laughs> I was your partner. Yeah, I am of your course partner. you were. I mean, <laughs> you remember all those great dinners we would have? Oh, and yes. then you would bring the wine. Yes. <laughs> yes. I worked at Chateau so Montalena back then and yeah. I was bringing home a lot of wine. There was a lot of God food wine going on around that little table. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, just the two of us at night having some wine when the yes. kids would go to bed. Um, and And I needed, I needed a friend in that time. And I have to tell you, Linda, you know, her heart is so big, like so big. Mm -hmm. And I was going through a dark hearted time and she was, she, God knew, God knew what friend I needed in that, in that era, like every day, like, Mm -hmm. and that just, it really was amazing. We had a lot of fun. Well, we, okay, so during <laughs> Linda that time, loves to go out, so I'm more of a homebody. So I had access to tickets to places. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, so we always you had places to go. Yeah, yeah we had totally. Always, we had something to do all the time. <laughs> yeah, because there was access. Yeah. God gave me access, and then you got access through that, and we always had. Oh. A fun time. I mean, theater. <laughs> what do we do? Live, live theater. Live music. Live music. Theater. I went to Everything. sports. I think we went to some sports games. Yeah, maybe. Oh, we I went don't to some remember. San Francisco Giants. San Francisco games. Giants. We had fun, and I needed to get out and and do things instead of just staying home and being 
by myself all the time. You know, I was kind of in an introverted space and Linda was in an extroverted space and she got me out there and I love it. It was fun. It was so fun. You're a lot of fun anyway. <laughs> it, was, it was a good time. And then do you remember we joined a uh, Bible study fellowship? Oh, that's right. Yes. We, we, um, that was a good two years. We did that, right? Yes. We joined Bible study fellowship and how it happened is, wasn't it your plumber? No, we got the it, screen door fixed. That's what it was. And that's right. Plumber. And but okay. I don't remember exactly how that happened. Like I think we took it to his repair shop and That's right. Alex, my son, saw a cross or something on his shelf. That's right. Because yes. my kids were, you know, they go to school at a, a Catholic school and they were like, "Oh, Jesus" or something. <laughs> I don't know remember what. They were what. 6 years old. <laughs> yeah, but they were in the, you know, cuz we picked up the the screen door there. And then he was like, Oh, I got, you know, Alex asked me where he got it from. And then, um, (laughs) he's like, Oh, I got it from the men's group at Bible study fellowship. And then that's when he was like, have you guys ever heard of that? And you had, cause your mom used to do it. Yes. So my mother went to Bible study fellowship for seven years in Texas and, and, um, I had never gone, but I'd heard about but it. But you always wanted to. I remember you saying you did want yeah. to go. Yeah, exactly. So, and you know how I remember you hadn't told me that yet. And I came home and told you about, yeah. I didn't have a car at the time. So I was hiring a taxi to come get me. Oh yeah, pick me every up, morning. Pick me up <laughs> That's right. He, he I remember was, it. Yeah, every morning. He uh-huh. picked me up in a minivan taxi and he was from Ethiopia and he was a Christian. Mm-hmm. You know, as I got to know him, you know, he had a family and children, but he'd drive me to Chateau Montalena every day from Linda's house. And we got to talking and he said, "Um, have you ever been to a Bible study? And I said, no. And he said, well, I go to a men's Bible study fellowship because they have a Bible study fellowship for men. Okay, wait, this was happening the same time I met the screen door guy? Time. Oh, my God. So, So I come home. You tell me about the screen door guy and I say, oh my gosh, <laughs> the, my taxi driver told me about the Bible study fellowship for women. He suggested I go or check it out. And, and then, that was yeah. God. And so yeah, it was. Go. And then we were like, so excited. <laughs> like this is a, a message, you know, like we got to go now. And then it's well, like, literally, yeah, it's literally right down the street from the house. Remember yeah, we went on Tuesday night, Tuesday, I think. every night, Tuesday and, night. Yeah. And, and the kids went to the, 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 Oh, they were so happy. The child Bible study. Yeah. Right? They had the, that, they were happy. So that's how we ended yeah, up. So it. God led us to Bible study fellowship together. And, and I, I learned a lot. That we, I, I want to do it again, actually. I know. Same. Yeah. Didn't we study John and Mark? Mark? Uh, no, it was John and, and uh, Matthew? Matthew. Yeah. Or was it Matthew and something else? I can't remember now. I have all It was my the Gospels. Yeah. I remember that because... Uh, Oh, it was, it was so awesome. powerful. Oh, I loved it so much. We but, had homework and we'd sit around the yeah, table we used to and do homework. we would talk about the Lord and do our homework. Mm-hmm. And we had, we had a picture of Jesus up on the wall. There's and a lot of good stuff. We romance with Jesus a lot. We yeah. romance with he Jesus our man. in that house. He, he was, was our man. man. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is our man. And he was, he our, was man. our man. Big time though. We had a picture of him we in were the like, kitchen. In love. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. Yes, we did. And we framed it. My uncle gave it to me. Yeah. You brought it back from a trip that you went on to Texas yeah. and we framed it and we, put it in the kitchen. <laughs> we did. <laughs> It was beautiful. Yeah. That was a romance time with Jesus. That was our, this is all coming back. Yeah, I know, right? I know. (laughs) We have a lot of history. Yeah, we do. With our man. Yes, we do. We have a lot of history with our man, (laughs) Jesus. And here we are today with him too. And he just continues to bless us. And just, he is the ultimate companion. Yeah. And, you know, during those times at God Food Wine, I remember like his presence big time, you know, even though we were these group of girls <laughs> and we would have these silly conversations and also their serious conversations. Yeah. But we always felt that yeah. presence of him coming in and, yeah. um, you know, he is where we are. And, you know, he never was like in a box, you know, in the Bible, he was places where they ate and they drank. Mm -hmm. He was with people 
from all all over. And um, I think what I found special about God Food Wine and what I do feel special about God Food Wine today is that his, it's always been about his presence, you know, but in a way that we can just be goofy and silly and fun and and let our guard down and just yeah, relax. Yeah, I remember you always used to say he loved the childlike features of ourselves. Oh. Do you remember you used to say yeah, that? Yeah, no, I don't remember that, but now I yes, appreciate you reminding absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah, and, um, the childlike qualities. The childlike qualities. He said, let the children come to me. Mm-hmm. And I really believe that means all of us, you yeah. know. We all have that. Yeah, that's a good word, the mm-hmm. childlike qualities of mm-hmm. us. He mm-hmm. said um, to enter the kingdom like a child, mm-hmm. you know. and With joy yeah. and happiness. Yeah. Like a child. And wonder. And yeah. yeah. And, um, and in a way, you know how children, they, they, they're not too analytical yet. You know, they, they believe. They believe. You mm-hmm. know, they believe. They trust. They trust. Mm-hmm. And that's that's his heart. You yeah, know? I know. Children are special. Yeah, and forgiveness like is so been so beautiful. Like mm-hmm. you, when you shared with me about how you, you've been experiencing forgiveness in your life, like yeah, it's a reminder to me and inspiration to me about forgiving. You know, I think you mentioned that scripture in the Bible about. 77 times 7 when what was the verse again? oh i'll get it right now we but we're talking about the um what it's called the forgiveness um that forgiveness is a daily task yes it's constant we're always having to forgive yes that's what it was in little things but in the ultimate big things and the you know in the little things it was we walk down the street we drive down the road you know like there's constant you know in our head and bringing in um that awareness yeah. of forgiveness over yes. people that strangers that you might know not know, and then you know people that you do know, yeah. and having that open heart to that, and um, how important it is. Remember, yeah. we were yeah. kind of t- discussing that a little bit too, because I thought that was a really important word for people that um, that letting go of things instead of harboring anger or resentment yeah. is a form of forgiveness. Yeah, right? just and, let it and go. doing it daily. Yeah, it creates a peaceful nature. Yes, and then I think the Lord will be happy with that yeah. because it it's is, like a constant purging in a way. You is. know, I mean, in the last podcast, um, Autumn talked about mm-hmm. purging and making space. And when you're talking, it reminds me of that. You know, of that um, when we forgive, we're kind of like you know we talk about in our daily like getting rid of our toxins in our body you yeah. know and like you know what i mean like cleansing right. and detoxing mm-hmm. and all of that mm-hmm. forgiveness is a major detox you know it's like oh and it's a daily thing like you were saying it's like, awareness of mm-hmm. that because cuz i learned this through another form of my forgiveness on another person was that e- you have to share that or you have to have that forgiveness it's between you and it's yeah. between god it's not necessarily with that per- other person right yeah that's driving road rage person, right? yeah or road yeah somebody who's driving down the road and you never yeah. talk to them mm-hmm. but you're upset at them and you're yeah. angry and you want to tell them off or you want to say something but they're not asking for will you forgive me for doing cutting you off on the light lane you know right. but you have to okay, I'm going to forgive him. (laughs) And then, you know, so on and so forth. I mean, sometimes people hurt each other and they don't even know. Yeah. And then you're hanging on to it or I'm hanging on to it. And then it's like festering inside of you. And then you're thinking, you know, I'm not going to see that person because they did this to me last time. And that other person might not even realize. I know, right. Half the time they don't. You know. Yeah. Or maybe they don't even care that yeah. they, and they know that they hurt you, but they're just like, oh, well, living their life, this and yeah. that. And, yeah. and in order for you to resolve that within yourself, you have to forgive 
that person without even him knowing or her knowing, sure. you know, and it's yeah. not about that person. It's about you. Yeah. Right. And then it's it about, totally is. And I think God is like, this is what you should be doing because yeah. it's not, um, healthy. Yeah. I think that's why Jesus was saying, uh, when someone asked him about how many times should we forgive? He was, says, what is it? 77 times seven or 70 times seven. Yeah. And, yeah. um, he was basically saying all the time. You, you know, constantly, it's yes. It's a constant thing because he knows our our heart, you know, and that forgiveness is really, you're right. It's about God cares about our hearts and not harboring that because he is love. And there's a process sometimes when it comes to forgiveness. It's not overnight all the time. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. You know, it's that process of forgiveness that leads us to um, the peace and that tranquility mm -hmm. that we get after we forgive we'll, completely. We'll put the verse in the yeah, caption. We'll, under below. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we read it together yesterday yeah. and um, and we talked about that. But yes, I, it's a constant. It, it doesn't matter how many times because Peter had asked him. How many times do you, conf uh, how many times do you forgive? Yeah, that's and what it Jesus, was, Peter. And Jesus said 79 times or something like yeah. that. But that perspective was like constantly, always, like yes, all the time, all you know? All the time, yeah, totally. So, it definitely was. That's another thing too, like um, about Bible verses, um, if we don't always have to know them exactly, like verse by verse and quote them. But just that we have that feeling like we we've read it and, you know, we're talking about it. It spoke so to you. It spoke. It spoke to me. It spoke to you. Um, so, yes, we'll list all the specific verses below. <laughs> yeah. um, but I'm so thankful that you are here today to talk about this when you when you about forgiveness. But when you sent me that email, I saw uh, the email she Linda had texted. Uh, sent me an email mm -hmm. and it was, it was pretty lengthy. And I just thought, oh my gosh, others need to hear this. Someone needs to hear this. Someone needs to hear this or others need to hear this. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if that person is you today, um, you know, just know that there is hope in um, the Lord and waiting for that prayer to come true. And sometimes it can be discouraging at times when that prayer doesn't come true mm -hmm. right away. Um, but there's always a perfect timing. And it's always a mystery to me how God answers prayers in his timing because he always knows the perfect time. And once that prayer is answered, it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. that was the perfect time. Yes. Even when we didn't know it back in the day, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. and I love you so much. You, you are a beautiful soul in my life so are you. and in so many others' lives. <laughs> so are you. Thank you, honey. Thanks for bringing this to the world. Yeah. yeah I, God, food, wine. It's amazing. Jesus is walking it and, and bringing it out to light. And um, I'm just thankful you're here with me, partnering with me and in it I'm always, I'm always here with you girl and thank you to all of you girls out there partnering you, with us in yeah. it yeah cheers um i have a question a signature yeah, sure. question for you at talk of the table with god food wine mm -hmm. so what is what is one thing that you love to do to relax and recharge when you have some you time because you're something that you just go towards when you have oh i have some me time this is what I'm going to do to relax and recharge. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I actually like lately. Okay. Because now my children are a little older. I have more time to actually spend making a meal like from rest on a recipe, mm -hmm. you know, from, you know, beginning to end yes. without any interruptions. And I like doing that. I actually like, um, following a recipe from scratch and, mm -hmm. um, and then having a nice meal with, you know, for myself or the children or whoever I'm cooking mm -hmm. for. I really do. I actually, it's, it's actually very, um, therapeutic for me yeah. to have a nice clean space, 
Yeah, and just like all my ingredients, them. like I go shopping ahead of time, and then I actually like follow the recipe, and it I eat it nice and hot. It actually is really therapeutic <laughs> for me. I love it now. <laughs> I actually because before the kid, you know, when I had the children when they were little, it was always like rush, rush, sure, rush. Sure, you got to get food on the table. They're hungry. Fast. Yeah, exactly. And so. um now it's not like that for me. I actually don't have to do that anymore, you know? Yeah, you get to you get to have time for you to just go at your pace mm -hmm. right when you cook. Yeah, it is really nice. Yeah. That sounds lovely. I know. You should come over. I was going to say, I would yeah, love to cook could, with you. Like old times. Yes. Yeah. We used to love to cook in the kitchen together. We did. Oh, and I don't have them with me on me today, but remember we made those menu, we would make those menus and we would have we would have God food wine at your house and you would host it around your little table in the living room. And we had like Linda's uh, cinnamon coffee. Uh, oh, yeah. Rose right. wine, rose, rose water wine. Um, oh, and nice. I'll send them to you. That. I'll send them to you. I still have them. <laughs> oh my goodness. But we would, I would love to see menu. this. I know. Yes. I meant to get it out before you came. We had a lot totally of good forgot. ideas back in the day. Yeah, we did. We remember totally we were going to make that movie together. Yes. yes. Hey, and we should still do we that. Still <laughs> <laughs> There's still a funny time. It was There's a comedy about us basically, <laughs> right? It was a yeah. comedy about us. It was. it was like a sitcom it was or totally something. A sitcom. And it was about a girl that moved in with a girl that had uh, two kids. Yes. <laughs> yes. But we had a lot of, oh we had, God, a, we had, we had of, material. Oh the Blue Beagle and right. The Blue Beagle coffee shop. That's right. We, we always, material. yeah, we had some really good material. We totally did. Well, I will definitely love to come over and cook with you again. That would be so yeah. fun. I'll bring the wine. Yeah, I would like to do that, actually. No, I'm, I yeah. think that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Okay. For sure. Let's definitely do that. I like that. Yay. How many times have we toasted tonight? Yes. <laughs> um, and also, being that these are all from the spread kitchen and we haven't even eaten anything, but let's start let's with the brownie. Say, okay, let's just take a little bite. <laughs> let's break some brownie together. Oh, my goodness. So, it's really um, chewy. But I will be linking some recipes below because I am so in love with Kale Junkie. Her name is Nicole. Mm -hmm. I can't pronounce her last name. And she has a new cookbook out called Love to Eat um, that my friend Kathleen mm -hmm. and beautiful family member gave to me. And she makes these tahini brownies. And she also oh, makes so the delicious. quinoa tabbouleh. So I'll be linking her cookbook and recipes below. And how are they? Cheers to the kale junkie. Amen. I like her um, She's Instagram. She's so awesome. I'm always following it. Oh my Cheers. God, so good. Mm. And thank you all for being here around the table at God Food Wine today. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Pour yourself another glass of wine and join Linda and me in this powerful conversation that happened later after the podcast as we sip and enjoy spread from Sonoma's delicious Lebanese inspired food. So we've, we've dug in into our meal and am tasting, let's see, what do we want to taste first let's to go try, with um, the, the, the quinoa? My, let's try the quinoa. What happened to my fork? Oh, there it is. Quinoa first. Okay, let's do it. Let's try the quinoa. It has parsley, uh, cucumbers, right? It's real fresh. Yes. So this is parsley, quinoa, cucumber. Mmm. Oh my God. Mmm. That actually goes really well. It brings out the lemon in the quinoa. Oh my gosh, right? it totally does. Mm -hmm. I didn't think this was going to actually pair real well with the tabbouleh, but I'm pleasantly surprised. And this is a rosé of Grenache. And you're right, it brought out the lemon. Mm -hmm. That's bizarre. I've never encountered that before. Yeah, I know. It's okay, let's try it with, what do you think, mm. saffron rice, mm -hmm. which has caramelized onions and apricot. Let's try that. Mmm. Mmm. This hit the spot today. Caramelized onions? Yes. Mmm. Ooh. That's good too. 
That is really good because of the apricot and the saffron. Brings out the oh sweetness. Gosh, so good. Mm -hmm. So this is one of my favorite, favorite wow. wineries, Hamilton Family. Mm -hmm. And I, one of my favorite grape varietals is Grenache because, and Grenache is a red grape that actually exudes like strawberry, juicy strawberry. Um, sometimes you can get some cherry. It's, it's a lighter hearted grape. And when it makes a beautiful rosé. And so I think that it's hearty enough to go with the meats and hearty enough to go with this. Well, just the saffron and, yeah. and then the apricot, it really brings out the fruit in that. Let me try again. Yeah. It brings out the fruit and the sweetness in the Grenache after oh, you try it. Yeah. I mean, it brings out the flavors. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is this is a, a match. <laughs> Completely. Wow. And that's what's so beautiful about food and wine is they draw things out of each. They draw characteristics out of each other that wouldn't normally be drawn out by themselves. And that's how we are as friends. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. as mm -hmm. friends, we we draw out characteristics of each other that we might not always draw out from just ourselves yeah. or even with another friend. Like, you know, we all have different friendships mm -hmm. and every friendship exudes a different personality, a different quality, a different pairing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, we complement each other. Totally. I love Middle Eastern food. I love it. I used to have a friend, I still have a mm. friend in um, Texas that um, I grew up with. She was one of my best friends when I was mm. growing up. And her father was from uh, Jerusalem, and he he uh, would come home from his job, and Tanya's mom would have a um, whole spread spread. It was that's why they call it spread. This yeah. is spread kitchen. She would have a whole spread. Oh, food of Med of Middle Eastern food. Yeah, and she was born and raised in California. But she <clears throat> learned how to cook from um, his mother, Siti. I remember Siti. She would always be there. And um, uh, she didn't speak English, I don't think. Um, she spoke Arabic. But I always remember her being there. And I would love to come home. Sometimes she, she would invite me to their house mm -hmm. after school. And there would be all of this, like yeah. tabbouleh and the dolma. Wait, this was the, in Texas? Yeah, so my friend's dad, uh, he was exiled from Jerusalem when um, he was a child. They kicked him out of the country. Mm. So um, that was back, you know, back in the war, back in what what era was that? Would that have been the 50s, I want to say? So he was a Christian. They were Christian, and he still is Christian. Then. Um, they had to flee their country, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't know all the story, but that's I just interesting. Remember, yeah. yeah, there's so much he turmoil was, right now going the over there. The Palestinians were in Jerusalem too, I know, and they were kicked out. And so he was Palestinian, mm -hmm. living in Jerusalem. Back then, the Palestinians lived in Jerusalem too. Oh, and then they, and then he was kicked out. They were had, they were forced to flee. And they were Christians, you know, they believed in the Lord. Mm. And um, that was, I think, too, maybe why they had to flee. You know, it wasn't very popular. I don't know. I don't really know the whole story, but I just know that loved coming home to their school. There's Christians. Their home. There's Jesus followers. There's Christians. There's Muslims. Yeah. And there's uh, Jews. I think he was a Palestinian Christian, I want to say. Yeah. Living in Jerusalem, born in Jerusalem. Like when when we would have a show and tell at school, mm -hmm. he 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 came once and he brought his um, head covering, mm -hmm. and we all got to try it on and wear it. I have a picture of me little with that around my head, Aww. you know, and um, the scarf, the black and like white. The, his was red and white. Oh, red and white with yeah. the with the black band, mm -hmm. and it was really yeah, it was neat. It was like my first experience of Middle Eastern food. And um, I just loved going over there. So you still love it, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, I felt to serve this today. I don't know why. Mm. Maybe there's someone out there that mm. relates to this 
to this food and their spirit because you know how at God Food Wine, we never choreograph what we were bringing. It was always like what we felt mm-hmm. in our spirit. We would just bring things. Mm-hmm. Um, today, I felt to make this for us. Well, let's pray for the people over there. Yeah. You know, in the Middle East right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. They're going through Thank so you, much, Lord. Lord. I just pray for it. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. For peace over the entire mm-hmm. Middle East in mm-hmm. all the countries that have mm-hmm. turmoil on them and aggressive um, entities that are harming them. Lord, I pray that there's food abundance Mm -hmm. in a unlimitless uh, supply for them, for the people that need to eat and be taken care of, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we pray that they have and resolve all the problems that are on them, Lord. Yes, Pray for peace in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Yes, Lord, we just thank you. I I just uh, partner with my friend's prayer that there would be no more turmoil mm-hmm. and that there would be encounters with Jesus. You have encountered um, people in the night that have seen you and have felt your love and your way, your truth, your life, and have been able to not deny it. It's just so overwhelming, your love, Lord. So we just pray for that encounter for everyone in this world, that they would hear you, they would see you, and they would come to know your love that just is unmatchable to anything else in this world, Lord. An encounter with you, God. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Oh, ooh, ooh, gosh, it got bright and he had like a glory on us. Would you like prayer for anything? As women, we're here to support and encourage you in daily life. If you would like prayer for anything, send us a DM on Instagram. We believe in the heart of prayer and we believe in miracles, so we will pray with faith-filled hearts for you. Did you know that in addition to women's gatherings, God Food Wine offers wine education and services for your next private food and wine event? Check out our services on the website, godfoodwine.com. We'd love to help you host your next event. And if you would like to come to our next women's gathering, if you are a woman who might want some support and encouragement, maybe you've moved to a new town in Sonoma County and you haven't met anyone yet, DM us on Instagram at godfoodwine. We would love to hang out with you at our next gathering. Until then, come hang out with us on Instagram. And our website is godfoodwine.com. And remember this, you are invited and you are loved. All right, my friends, we'll talk soon. See you around the table of God Food Wine.